What's good, YouTube? We hey. back with another episode of the Track Wolf Godcast. Yes, I'm your boy Track Beats. We got my man Chino Blizzy in the building hey, nah. with us today. You know what I'm saying? Hey, make sure y'all go check out Vinegar Hill. You know what I'm saying? Dope website, IG. You know what I'm saying? They doing a lot of good work up there. You know what I'm saying? They got some pretty dope merch too. You know what I'm saying? Yes, From shirts, hoodies, pants, everything. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all go check out Vinegar Hill. You know what I'm saying? Salute. But on that note, you know what I'm saying, we got a special guest in the building Ooh. with us, you know what I'm saying? We got Miss Stacy Smith over here. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Taking some time out of your busy schedule to travel out here to come see us. <laughs> yes. So I'm on vacation mode, vacation mode. So we yeah. call it a good time. So where are you actually traveling from? So I'm originally from Fluvanna County, um, so country girl. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's about a 30 minute commute, um, but Charlottesville is, you know, somewhat home because, you know, I work here and always worked and went to school here, so. Yeah. So yeah. how is it for you going to school out there in Fluvanna, being on the outskirts of the city? Um. So, like, you know, what, UVA or just, Public um, schools. Public schools. Public schools. Well, public schools, you know, riding a big yellow bus every day. <laughs> it was, we had to go all the way around the county and pick up, you know, probably the commute was probably about 30, 45 minutes on the school bus I didn't every even day. think about that. See, because yeah. I'm in the city, so now that you're saying it, it's like, oh, y'all so, probably do have a longer bus ride. Longer bus ride. We're in the back mm. roads, no lines on the road, so. Yeah. Did they do the change for the bad weather too? No, we kind of cancel school. Oh, yeah, right. just, it's just yeah. too bad for yeah. change. Yeah. Like, yeah. Roads too <laughs> little back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what kind of stuff did you kind of do growing up out there? So I would say, I mean, my family, we have always, I was raised on the farm. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather um, pretty much raised the grandkids because while our parents worked. So we got on the school bus at my grandparents, we got off the school bus at my grandparents, and in the summer we were at my grandparents. So all the grandkids so the grandparents kind of grew up. Were raised you guys. Yes. <laughs> but so we we in the summer we had to wake up, we, you know, had to get the cows ready, we had yeah. to, you know, get the horses and the pigs and the chickens and all that. So how do you get the cows ready? Oh, yeah. We don't know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm saying yeah, but I don't know what get ready means. <laughs> so you actually had to be in the hay field, like baling hay. So I remember my cousins, we would be in the hay field, baling hay. Rolling it or baling? Like, or so it? it was some machine that you like. You ride? Cut, yeah, you ride it and Gotcha. It picks up the hay and it bales it and then like my the, the male cousins they had to pick it up and put it on the truck. Oh, so I got to ride the in the right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But we were in the hay fields, we had our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and you know our Vienna sausages to get through the day. But uh, it was it was the time. Life for real. <laughs> I know what's crazy is we say country life and I was raised in the city, you know what I'm saying, and this is still similar to the city, not the city, the city up there, but that's the lifestyle I would much rather get familiar with, you know what I'm saying? Living off the land. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have to slaughter some food? You know, like so we, we had to go to the stock markets with my grandfather and had to sit in a stinky stock market all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and like he would buy cows and then um, then some were slaughtered or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, he brought the meat home to the family. I wasn't a fan of the fresh meat. Why it, not? Has a, it, it has a different taste fresh meat does for me hmm. um so it was a taste i wasn't completely used to um i couldn't get used to it but well, like that wild see taste. that brings a whole yeah. nother perspective yeah. it's almost like it's more yeah. organic too though that's true it just has a different taste to it because ours is so processed when we processed, get it you know yeah. what i'm saying ours yeah. is so processed by the mm -hmm. time we get to it that i know i probably would be thinking like this tastes different than regular meat if i tried exactly. it because it's 
it's fresh off, yeah. off the market. I yeah. never even thought that perspective either. That's crazy. So oh, this is so organic. It don't even sit right <laughs> with me. <laughs> what about like pig's feet and shit legs and so, hormones and all of that? We didn't, like, I don't remember my family ever like slaughtering anything to get pig feed and chitlins and like that. But did you eat them? So apparently I ate them. <laughs> ate them when I was growing up. My father said I had used to sit down with a bowl and like. Ooh. But I, go crazy. I don't remember that. I feel like I remember eating pig feet, but I do not remember eating chitlin. That's, I knew this is what you was talking about. Yes. So you sit down Did with you a ever bowl. see the the skinning of the process, like when y'all do the chickens or any of the food, the animals? I didn't, but I think like my mom. She did, yeah. and her siblings when they grew up, they saw a little bit more of the skinning process, but I, I didn't personally. So did you try to get away from it the closer you got to high school, or was it when you left high school when you was able to get away from it? Well, we still have horses and and cows and stuff that we. You still know. got the. Yeah, land. we still have partial, but when my grandfather passed away, like the the farm kind of died down yeah. or whatever, but um. We we still love being on the farm and riding horses and stuff. Okay, so you don't shy away from it. No, I don't. I'm no, I don't shy away from it. So like, what what are some differences that you probably notice it notice within yourself growing up on the farm from the typical teenager? Work ethic. Mm. Um, teens these days they don't know what work is like. Yes, uh, it's, it's a whole different like you know we had to. We had to get up at 6 a.m. And, and go out in the fields. I mean, like, I didn't per se have the hard, hard work, but my, like, the, the boys of the family did. But you did. still had to get up at 6, right? But I had to get up. I had to be out there. And the way my grandfather raised us was to, like, if no one else on the street was picking up trash, we got to pick up the trash. Like, mm. so you so cleaning up your neighborhood. You cleaning up your neighborhoods. Yeah. If someone needs wood, wood up the street, you know, they're cold. We're going to go in the woods. We're going to cut them yeah, some wood. Got some good principles yeah. out there. <laughs> so, Grand Pops was holding it down. He, shout out to Willis Thomas Sr. Rest so do you ever talk to him to see how he got to that space? You know what I'm saying? Because he also grew up in a different time era. Mm -hmm. where it was a lot harder for him to obtain the land or keep it however we want to perceive it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure. I, I just think... You know, they had to work harder. Like our parents and our grandparents just had to work harder to get where they what they needed and, and where they wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So I think we're really a blessed generation for real because we don't have to go out there and go to the stock markets to feed our family. Like we go to Food Line or Wegmans yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, That's like so. a gift and a curse though, because if they shut it down like they trying to minimize things, which we've been seeing since March, a lot of us would be hurt. Yes. Because we don't know the techniques that you know. That's true. So That's for true. you would be good. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they shut the market down. We got I'm about it. to go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got something out here right yeah. now. Like, mm -hmm. But my father, he always had like a large garden. So we do, you know, garden the squash and tomatoes and all that stuff is fresh out the garden. So. So like, was there ever hard times on the farm or what does hard times look like on the farm? Um, I would say when uh, finding land. So my grandfather had connections. He was a big networker. So like, you know, Sometimes you got to connect with, you know, the black farmers, the white farmers, whoever. And yeah. you had to use their land to get your um, your hay bale. Um, so yeah. those things, I think hard times would, if he didn't have the land to do what he needed to do, I think I would consider that maybe a harder time. But okay. um, What about weathering? Oh, weather. See, you know, I was... I don't remember the weather, I'm going to be honest, um, but I can only imagine that the winter, you had to prepare in the summer to um, to make through through the winter time, yeah. so, but it was some good times though, I will say. My cousins, we, uh, we, we cherished that too, like, it was a good time. We had dirt bikes and um, four-wheelers four -wheelers all through, <laughs> like, we would be gone. I was, you couldn't sit in the house, first of all. Like, 
grandma set you outside and you were outside yep. all day and like the no is different. Out, back and forth. <laughs> no, no. What, what about what about the the days when somebody didn't want to feel like getting up that six in the morning? Because <laughs> yeah. I know they had to come sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you most of the time you had to get up and go with everybody. But if you didn't want to get up, like you had to clean the house, like you had to wash dishes, sweep the floors, you had chores to do. There's something else to take place. So, yep. Okay. But um, it was definitely good times growing up in Fluvanna. That's a pretty good way of lifestyle to prepare you the way times is actually mm -hmm. right now. So it kind of keeps you a little bit of mind at peace. Yeah, know? so I do. I, it has made me, you know, the lifestyle of always helping people because like we always were raised to like help let's let's help each other get what we need so yeah. i always keep that mindset um and everything doesn't have to be a charge or a fee like let's just help each other get what we need to you know be yeah. in life so. I charge energy and attention that's what i charge <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Be yeah, attentive. that's what I require. It don't have to be funds, like you're saying all yeah. the time. So that's what I be telling some people. Because we had a couple people ask, like, oh, well, what y'all charge to get on there? I'm like, yo, it's just the vibes, you know what I'm saying? We charge energy, you yes. know what I'm saying? And we show a lot of love and support. We got all kind of different brands that come through, you know what I'm saying, that drop stuff off. or You that's know what I'm nice. saying? Just a good mixture. Mm -hmm. And it's like a good space to where, like, now since this town being the size it is, now it's a place to where people can go to where if they coming into town or if they already in town you can be like all right what's going on who got what going on exactly. you know what i'm saying so now it's like a place you can kind of go pinpoint mm -hmm. all right everybody's different it's not just one thing you know what i'm saying yeah. sharing i mean just sharing that's why like when you when you had um reached out i didn't know who you were but you know i went to your page i'm like okay just the fact that they're sharing positive things like for free like you can't sometimes we don't we think things are supposed to come to our front door yeah. like it's there resources are there so i kind of i it appreciate is. you you know you got i saw y'all was show. already on it you yeah. was already on it with the <laughs> podcast i'm like yes we already all flowing in the same direction we want to bring like minds together you know we all come in different shapes and forms and different way of lifestyles you know what i'm saying but we all got one goal which is to try to unify you know mm -hmm, what i'm saying mm -hmm, definitely. so how did that correlate with you going over and like leaving your high school going to uva so i had got accepted to longwood university first and in that process um i became a teen mother yes that's a congratulations um, <laughs> because we are still here doing great yes, and amazing. My so my was a complete blessing. They didn't have Plan B back in the day, so the you plan to was <laughs> to have it. <laughs> that is the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna be honest. Um, I feel like I wasn't educated. I was not educated enough in high school um, about teen pregnancy, sex, and we have to have these real conversations. And yeah. you know, I would say. Sometimes it's an uncomfortable conversation for parents to have with their kids. So, um, you know, I became a teen, teen mom. My mom was like, well, go ahead to um, Longwood. I'll take care of the baby. I was like, absolutely not. I want to raise my own child. So I um, went to Piedmont Community College first. And then once I got my associate's degree, I transferred to UVA. And I'm still 30 minutes away. Um, my daughter is still being raised with family because that was important to me. Yeah. Um, but I just kept going and it was all a blessing because my first semester in college, um, I finished my last exam on December 17th and I had my baby girl on December 18th. Uh, I mean, so, it, and I, did, I then had a month break before the next semester, Christmas break, yeah. and I went right back. And to share another blessing with that, I don't owe PVCC or UVA a dime right now. Hey, congrats. That's a... Yeah, so... Sally Mae is a mother. Yeah. You know, she be coming for the pockets. Yeah. I didn't have to deal with Sally Mae, but I know a bunch of people who did have to deal with Sally. I'm thankful. I mean, because I was a working mom and, like, yeah. financial aid, I didn't do anything other than fill out financial aid. So you can't make it. You must have been it. focusing your energy. You was doing something in the... Uh, 
metaphysical world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I so. Mean, so, it, I guess it's to make a long story short, like, you know, that journey, you can make it whether you're a team mom or not. Like, you just got to keep going. Like, you know, people write team moms off, you know, or team, yeah. team fathers off. And, like, you just keep pushing and prove people wrong. So, like, the moment where you thought you might be pregnant, not when you found out, how did it affect your mind? How did it affect the way you moved? I never thought, I never even, um, see, that's the whole story that I can't even share. <laughs> um, that's, that's the uneducated piece of it that, um, hey, that's the part, that's the learning part. That's how you got to the other part. Oh, so, man. So yeah. maybe that would be something that would help someone else. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Without the details. transparency of experience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with transparency. Yeah. So. I was so uneducated that when I did have my first um, um, best sexual experience, um, and I, I knew something was off, so I was like, okay. My friend said, if you ever think you might have got pregnant or you you did something wrong, you just go in the bathroom, you pee, and then you'll be okay. So I went in the bathroom. <laughs> See, I told you the story, but um, so. That's how uneducated it's we have cute, to educate bro. our kids. Yeah. I mean, but I did not know. Yeah. Um, did you so think it was good after you peed? I you, thought I was, you was like, good. I'm good. Girl. I'm good. Yeah, it was almost over for a second. All that out. Look, I'm glad I asked you. Yeah. I would have so, booed at the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. That's an embarrassing story, but that is a story for somebody. Somebody else. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so how did you find out after that? Um. Yeah, I became sick instantly. Like, my body reacted to it instantly. So, my parents, I didn't think anything. So, my parents went to the hospital and everything. I was sick. And um, they found out the same time I found out. So, that was not good. You got real quiet in there, didn't They it? had to be appropriate because you was Boy. in the hospital when they found out, right? So, yes. it was like a safe space. Yeah, Boy. and I'm just like, well, you can share whatever in front of my parents. I don't have anything I mean, to hide. They can't beat me here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah that was my my journey um oh, of teen pregnancy and then transitioning to uva so yeah. but yeah uva um was was pretty cool um but i had to i had to work i was in the library at 3 a.m and 4 a.m while my parents they so you was daughter. in the classes you had to go to the physical classes mm -hmm. i went to physical classes most of my classes were at darden um business school yeah um but yeah and i had to go i was a little older than some of the students um about the time i got there so so yeah. how was that experience for you because i know some people get shaky over that thought process as well you know what i'm saying feeling like they are older, so that's like the insecurity mm -hmm, thing. So. Mm -hmm. I was probably about, I would say three, three years older. So while, you know, 18 uh, year olds are coming in, I may be oh, so 21, it wasn't that 20. Big of no, a difference. no, it wasn't that big of a difference. Um, but it was, I was focused, so it didn't matter. I had a goal, like, I wanted my degree. So whether I'm with people that are older than me, because I was in class with probably people that were 60 years old and people that were kids that were 18 years old so everybody yeah but did you did you face any like any one stereotyping you or, or any obstacles with having a child and going through college um my i wouldn't say so um you know it's crazy because you would think that uh i was working at food line i had my daughter and i was going to school like I qualify for no assistance, no help whatsoever. And I'm like, I make ten dollars an hour at Food Line. I have a child. I'm going to school, and like, still you not qualified. still not qualified. So, um, I just had to just push harder. Just like push harder. Ten dollars an hour, boy. That's something to manage with a kid and going to school. That's something to manage by yourself. Exactly. So. But you was focused. That's the good thing with the universe is if you just focus your energy, you don't have to worry about the funds. It's going to be hard, but it always flows the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But on that note, we're going to cut to this break and we're going to slide right back to y'all. And we back from the break. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I was thinking and I remember you talking about having a daughter 
going into school and you also mentioned buying a home. How did that come about? So after I finished school, I um, moved to Richmond and um, got me a place in Short Pump and my parents never approved of it. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't visit me one time. Did they approve of the area? They didn't approve of me moving out and renting. Okay. And shacking up. Okay. Uh, so they didn't approve boy, of that. Boy, yeah, use that word. I, yeah. Oh man, that's a yeah. sugar word. Up. <laughs> you over here shacking up like, hey. Okay. Flashbacks. So she wanted, <laughs> she wanted me to, they, they wanted me to stay home and save money to purchase a home. So okay. within a year, I didn't find employment because um, right during that time, 2008, nine, we were going through a recession. So it was hard yeah. to find employment. Yes. Um, so I ended up coming back to this area. Um, and working at UVA and um, I guess then it moved on to like okay what's the next step so my um my, I remember the day that I was like okay I'm ready to come back this way my, my parents was there with a yeah. truck to yeah. pack me right. up they were ready <laughs> <laughs> so from there they wanted me to come home save up you um, left in person too it was all in one inclusive passage. Yes. Was, was, was. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Very excited. Yeah. Um, that was coming home. So I came home. I saved. And they, the goal was, you know, I didn't have to pay any bills. But the goal was, you come home, you work, and you save so you can purchase a home. Mm. So um, that's what I did. I worked. And um, I knew I wanted to purchase a home um, by the time I hit 30. So... Before um, I hit 30, probably about 28 is when I reached out to one of my high school teachers um, that was a realtor. And, um, you know, he was like, okay, let's get started. So I was 28. So it took me two years to find the house that I wanted in the price range that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So is it's that not. Good, a, is that good timing or bad timing? It's probably a little longer. I probably, haven't house hunted before. Yeah. So I don't house know. hunting usually doesn't take that long, but I was. I was I just stuck to what I wanted. Yeah. Um, and my realtor, he probably should have got paid double. Um, for the well. <laughs> he went out of his way to make sure I got what I wanted for the price that I wanted. But um He was working your magic on him. Look, <sighs> look, <laughs> look <laughs> damn, it's, it's been like, a year and a half now. Yeah. Come on, come on now, like <laughs> And he's still he's still working. He'll tell you he's, I still should be getting a paycheck from you. <laughs> but no, he's 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 a sharing like he actually um you know he was kind of like a father figure when i went to search like gotcha. okay you gotta really interview your realtor when you um start the process and feel their vibe you're a vibe reader i'm a vibe yeah. reader but not just to sell me a house sell me the house that i want sell me the house in my price range um and then when we were exploring houses like he like this house needs a roof this house may flood this house may you know what i mean so yeah. you're not because i don't know to look for those things so mm -hmm. have an honest um realtor um to just you know guide you through the process was probably the most important thing i could have done and patient how many realtors did you go through before you found just, just that one just hit it right on the I money hit it right that's the really the universe that's the was working one. with you that's the only one I had really knew at that time when I was house hunting at 28. Um, now I know a lot of, um, I have a lot of friends in realty, um, that are, went into realty, um, real estate. Yeah. But, I mean, back then I didn't, I didn't know anybody. And the only reason I knew him is because he mentioned it when we were in, he was my substitute math, a computer lab teacher. <laughs> and he had mentioned, I'm like, I don't know any realtors. And I thought back, and I'm like, I'm going to call him. And, and he hooked me up right away. So networking, it pays off. Yes. So, but. So, what were some things that you had to personally do to be able to be prepared to even call the realtor, like financially, systematically, mm -hmm. to be able to save? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I had already prepared myself. Um, I knew. Okay, if you want to buy a house, you have to be able to pay this mortgage. So I started paying a mortgage to myself every month. Nice. 
So that we way, it's not day. a shock to yeah. me when it, that bill really comes. Mm -hmm. um, because you only not you not only have a mortgage, but you have to pay the electric bill, the water bill, your cell phone bills, groceries, gas. you know, gas, yeah. all this yeah. stuff yeah. included. Yeah. Like, you can't just say, oh, I got a thousand dollar mortgage and that's it. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, and then, you know, you have stuff that's going to happen. Like, when I moved in my house, I needed a roof. So what did I do? I had to make sacrifices on, I don't get my nails done every week. I don't get mm -hmm. my hair done. I do wash my own hair, I color my own hair. Yeah. I didn't go on vacation, you know, that whole year. My friends understood like, you do what you gotta do to mm -hmm. get a roof on your house. So you gotta make sacrifices. And I think people have a hard time making sacrifices. Yes. So how did you know which sacrifices to choose? Um, or what I better should say, what to sacrifice? So, I guess I would say, like, if you like add up a five dollar cup of coffee every day, that's by the time you get through the end of the year, that's like fourteen hundred dollars for one five dollar cup of coffee. Like, you don't need that cup of coffee, that could go towards something different. Yeah. Or that can go towards your savings. So put five dollars to the side every day, and then okay, that could be a savings or something. Or your or part of your down payment to your house, like just or you don't need to spend eighty dollars in your nails and toes and stuff every day. Like you can get a foul and and do it and make some sacrifice yeah. for a little while. I'm not saying yeah. you don't have to treat yourself and groom <laughs> yourself. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. But you sometimes you just gotta make a sacrifice to get where you want. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I had this thing where um, with me and my lady, whenever we would get upset, I'd be like, all right, we're going to put $20 in the champagne bottle. So we can't reach it. Mm -hmm. Just to just to see just to see our temperament, you know what I mean? Yep. And um, just to get to a better place and be able to relate and see it physically and talk about it mm -hmm. when we do see it. Yeah. Yeah. Get in the yeah. Like a little gold to kind of put in front something. So obtainable that you can reach, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, I guess me, me and my friends now currently, um, a few of my friends, we have like this hundred dollar envelope saving thing. So you take a hundred envelopes and you um, number it one through a hundred. And then um, the purpose of, I think it's like a little bit over $5,000 once you finish completing, filling up every envelope. But Number one envelope is one dollar. Number fifty envelope is the fifty dollars. Like, and you just keep going, and and it is no order or whatever. It's just like if you got seven dollars left over from grocery shopping, or whatever, stick that seven dollars in the envelope, and like, just don't even think about it. Don't even think that it's even there. But and yeah. then next thing you know, you got this. So how know, do people think past those thoughts that need those funds? That's trying to save on what they need how do they think past those thoughts because that's the hardest part is it knowing is. that oh i know i folded up this 20 in the back of my wallet and i tucked it behind this back here and i you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying for like, me the motivation always is i think of stuff like this when i'm in a spot where i need it like i, I think of ideas like this when i'm in a spot where like damn man that that couple dollars i got like you said i got this drink on or I was in there buying these extra backwoods because I want extra flavors. You know what I mean? Like, yep. all this frivolous stuff is just unnecessary. Haircuts every two weeks. And where am I going? I'm chilling. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's when it starts to hit me like, all right, this money over here, I don't need that scratch ticket because I'm probably going to lose. You know what I mean? That's it. And like, you buy a drink from the, 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 the service station and you're going home and you have. Drink, drink in the, the refrigerator, house. so like, yeah. just save that dollar and put it in an envelope. Just little small stuff. You don't, you don't have to. And everyone, you know, like, think you know, I need all this big money. Like, well, you maybe got money because maybe you came from a more privileged family. Okay, maybe so, but I saved all my money. My parents didn't buy anything for me. I made the sacrifices for myself. Mm -hmm. So like, you gotta make sacrifices. Like, you don't need new shoes every month yeah i don't buy new shoes every month so it's kind of like you pick and choose and things as you want and well a lot of people um are willing to do the internal work and you have like a lot of discipline yeah you know from how you grew up and like your structure and the family and stuff and a lot of people just don't have discipline period 
Or they're just, you know, they're very low on that discipline scale. You know what I'm I saying? Agree. They're disciplined in the say. wrong areas. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think once people realize that the fight is within themselves and not with the people or everything outside of them, it becomes a little bit easier with setting those boundaries and standards for yourself. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To agree. become disciplined. Because I be trying to think of, like, different tactics or ways to, like, Cause some stuff we just naturally have, you know what I'm saying? Like some stuff I feel like I just naturally have, so it, it it's it's hard trying to explain it, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Out here in the right words so that somebody else can understand it and utilize mm -hmm. it. So like after buying your first home, like how did it make you feel? Like how did it affect you? I've been in my house, like I said, almost six years. Literally every time I walk in my house, I feel proud of my house. Every single time, I know that's weird, <laughs> but every single time I walk, I'm yeah. so thankful. Um, and just to back up a little bit, um, and I'm like, the funny part is, I'm learning. I didn't even realize I was, I feel like God was guiding me um, through the whole thing because I don't remember like making sure my credit was right, making sure this was right. I didn't have all my ducks in a row when I first explore buying the house I didn't mm -hmm. but if I was to tell someone now like make sure your credit is straight and I know that's a hard thing sometimes right now I'm getting my credit straight because I went to refinance my house and I had some medical things on my credit and mm -hmm. I'm very transparent about it because I know it's going to help somebody but I wasn't pulling my credit report I'm like I don't have anything on my I don't have bad credit I pay my bills you yeah, know yeah and medical, someone had told me medical bills don't affect your credit score. Yeah. I I listened to that person. Yeah. So I had a few things this year on my um credit report. So I I'm paying them off. I've got pretty much every bill paid except one. Um, one was like nineteen hundred dollars. But I'm like, I'll pay them when I get nineteen hundred dollars, you know? Bills, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they're steep. For the smallest so, things too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So like, um, just you know, get your credit together. Um, and you don't have to have the best credit, um, but just just work on it. Put um shout out to Tamir Armstrong. I'm gonna give her a shout out this time. <laughs> and she told me um to go to annual annualcreditreport.com mm -hmm. you can pull your credit yourself you don't have to go to a fancy bank and all this or a broker you can pull it yourself you get the report instantly it tells you your credit score that gives you everything more than credit karma because i know they got credit karma yes. too it breaks it down i mean it breaks it all the way down gotcha. um when it's even to the point when it's going to fall off of your credit mm -hmm. um and the, the phone number who you need to call to pay like everything um, and then you just knock, and it'd be like some stuff is like $53 you have on pay that, you know, and it'll fall off and you're, it'll bump your credit score up. So get your credit together. And, um, but I know when I bought the house, like we had to do like home inspections. I did have to have a down payment, but like, I remember reading my contract and it said, you need to put 10% of your house payment down of your house, um, down. So I'm like, Ah, fifteen grand. Okay, I'm like, I don't want to put fifteen grand cash out of my bank account. Like, yeah. so I was like, what about five? He was like, yeah, we can change it to five. So <laughs> I'm sharing that because sometimes conch, like, ask questions. The negotiation. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. I, I cut that, you know, fifteen thousand in half, and then that's what I put on my house. Initially, I'm gonna have to pay for the house myself anyway. Yeah. So I mean. Just ask questions and, um, but negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. be open <laughs> while dealing with the realtors and, and going through these contracts is basically. Mm -hmm. So, did you have a process where you was like taking notes down? You had pen and pad or like something in your phone that you used? Yep, I always took notes. Um, I and I asked a lot of questions. Don't ever be ashamed of like asking questions that you think may sound stupid or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Never do that. Like get a trusted party and and that's one thing too we got to be open for people to ask us questions and not make yes. them feel like you know you you holding up my time or like yeah. we have to like be there for each other so i agree 
I can agree with that as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's definitely a hard process, but a doable process. But you have to hear or see people that's relatable to know that you can do it. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. obviously people watch TV and movies and see people with houses and stuff. But until somebody close to them or somebody they know of that knows somebody that's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That they feel like is a real life person, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because TV, mm -hmm. they don't really feel real. We know they are, but they don't feel real until somebody close to you. That's and it's true. like, oh, all right, well, they did it. It's a subtle seed planted. And now, like you said, later down the road, your friend telling you later, like, hey, you planted the seed for me to look into yep. buying a home. So, and, and educate your kids, you know, too, about it. Because if not, it's going to be a repeating cycle. Like every, every, you yeah. know, time, you know, they just won't know about it. So I'm trying to teach my daughter a little bit by and by about, you know, owning homes and stuff like that. But, and this is a good thing too. So when I went to refinance my house, I have, I now have almost a hundred thousand dollars of equity in my house. That's like, so that's my money. Yeah. That is my money. So if I want to refinance and say like, I needed fifty thousand dollars to pay for my daughter's college. I can pull that from my house and pay for her college. Mm -hmm. So like, people are like, well, I wonder how in the world people save up a hundred thousand dollars. Like, I got that in six years just from owning a house. Investing. Inve yep. Yeah. You gotta investing. invest in yourself. Yeah, that's an investment. Yep. So. That's a really big investment, but that you know. You also was fortunate enough to have a household, you know what I'm saying, that knew about that process, That's you know true. what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. But it's also dope that you understand that and you out here putting the information out here for the people, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So they can also get there in the same place, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But on that note, we're going to cut to this break and we're going to slide back to y'all. And we back from the break. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you know, one of my favorite questions here is, um, are you spiritual or religious in any way? Like, what's your history with religion and spirituality? Yeah, so I was born and raised in the, in the church. Um, and, I mean, it was a requirement yeah. to go to church. For most of us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you had to be active in church. You had to be in the church choir. You had to be an usher, all that. Um yeah. So I enjoyed it. I didn't have a I didn't have a problem with it. Um, and as I got in my adulthood, um, my pastor, my former pastor, he approached me to be the the youth um, director. Mm. And I'm like, I'm 22. I don't know anything about being a youth director. <laughs> <laughs> you about to learn today? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, what he did was, which was smart. <laughs> Yeah, it's Ooh, pretty the maneuver. Come yeah. On. yeah. So, mm -hmm. I was, so I was, and then I felt, <laughs> after I told him, like, I don't think so, like, I felt convicted after I said no. Like, yeah, felt guilty. Maybe, yeah. But, um, so what, I, what he did was I pretty much shadowed the first lady. So she took the role, and then he was like, well, you're going to assist her. Well, that was kind of a setup a little bit because oh, they yeah. lived in Richmond, so like I took on some of the a lot of the tasks, um, the hands-on tasks. But it was it was. <laughs> we ain't made it to town yet. Do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> that part, yes. Sister, sister. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I've been in youth ministry for um, so I did it for about ten years, um, and it was an experience. Um, I loved it. I loved being with the kids. I was. The youth director and the praise dance director um and i don't know how to dance i said praise dance your praise dance director. praise there it was all that's what you feel yeah. yeah it's from from the spirit what, what she's saying what i feel is i have no rhythm <laughs> i have no rhythm no rhythm was you know how to work steps. the fields <laughs> look i provide other value okay <laughs> i am not the twerker but um i just had to teach myself you know and you watch videos youtube was a good teacher like you can yeah. teach yourself anything yes. you want almost yes um so i just watched youtube and then i let the kids own their dances too so they came up with some of the dance moves and stuff but it was fun it was fun getting them connect my main goal was getting them connected 
you know, and just knowing who God yeah. is because when you get older and you go out in this world, like you got to be connected to something like positive in your life, yeah. like and you gotta, you're gonna be connected to something else that's negative. So, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, this is something that I'm beginning to wonder because. I say probably about ninety seven percent of people that come on here it was like church was a must. So like was there ever a point in your life where you felt like this is an obligation? And if so, did that ever develop into something that you would like to do? Um Yeah, I don't think so. Um like it it took it was hard to step away from being a youth um director. I would say, but I would say it now I'm kind of resting in ministry and I feel like, you know, God is calling me to do something different. Yes. I don't know what it is, but um, youth ministry, I felt like I was getting burned out and I wasn't enjoying it anymore. Yes. Um, and sometimes, you know, church folks can run you away from the church. Did you feel confined like you couldn't? do more or express more or help more mm, no i think i was i'm pretty much always myself so like so the church just kind of pushed you away from the i church. mean it's kind of like you can go 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 and do 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 and it's still never enough sometimes and that part yeah. is discouraging like you for who it's for the leader and it's never a lot enough help to like sometimes you you're going and going and doing and doing and a lot of it's by yourself mm -hmm. especially if you don't have a team so i will recommend anybody that's in ministry make sure you're part of a team because you get so much more accomplished that's with anything in mm -hmm. life like they teach us to get away from each other and be separated i know they get this six feet thing right now but like we all are supposed to be together. It's crazy mm -hmm. that having a business partner or doing things together is such a difficult task. Like, they teach us to be in competition with each other. Mm -hmm. That don't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, we should learn that in school when we play in sports. We're on the same team. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Every position is valuable. I know they tell you you got to compete for your position, but it's like, if you're not in the league, your position is just as valuable. Mm -hmm. You come in as the second legs to carry on Exactly. That position is weight, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When I was younger, I, I from like five to about seven or eight, I used to have to go to church. And I didn't really want to. But then after I didn't, even at that young age, I realized how much substance and just presence and awareness that it made me aware of. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get back into it and wanted to get back into it. And then by the time that my mom did get back into it, by the time I was 13, 14, I was already away from out of, mm -hmm. I put my foot in the street by that time. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. 12. Yeah, yeah. so like... So that's, what, what pulled you away from it? Um, like I said, like, just... I was burning myself out too much and I didn't have a team. I think if I would have had a team, I would still be rocking and rolling with youth ministry. And I'm still connected and, and do things. My pastor texts me right now to do something like, I got you. Um, so I'm, I'm still. You're going to formulate your own organization or something similar? No. You want to no. get away no. from it now? <laughs> no. Um, I, I enjoyed it. Like, <laughs> having just a syndicate. This is another thing, too. I think sometimes you miss well adults miss the mark with kids you have to make it enjoyable you have to yeah. make it fun they're kids you cannot just hear it's like information bible information, here information, yeah information yes information. that yeah. doesn't work so like i had um youth explosions where um you know gospel rap artists would come or lock-ins and they will have talent shows and a rapper would come at midnight and rap like you mm -hmm. have to make it and like you have to connect with their generation yeah. like you can't just be in bible study and sunday school all the time like you know and i took them to nursing homes and visit the sick and like you know they would sing a song or but then after they left the nursing home okay let's go ice skating you know so you have to balance it out um yeah. to keep kids connected and want and want them to come. You it's know. dope you did that with the ice skating afterwards, because if not, then it feels like, I know when I was a kid and I was in them positions, it was like, 
then I feel like I gotta reward myself somehow afterwards. But mm -hmm. you already got the reward in place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like and it's, it makes it even more subtle. Yeah, and small things like after dance practice, like I had like a Capri Sun juice and like a double a Debbie cake. So after practice, they was ready for their snack. You know, just something <laughs> small. Um, but you know, ministry was was fun, and it still is fun. Um, but you know, any any time you go into a ministry role. Um, you have to definitely understand the purpose and, and the goal of ministry and then make sure you actually are making a connection. Is the purpose and the goal of ministry always the same or does it differ with the people? Um, I would say the goal should be the same. Each ministry should have a goal and a mission, um, whether it's women ministry, marriage ministry, um, like you have to figure out a way to connect yeah. with that group um, of people, or or it's just a waste of time. Yeah, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, when I did, when I was a teenager, and I would have to go again with my mother and stuff. Um, even when I was younger, the things that I would do with youth ministry did help develop my character, having a be in front of people and speak in front of people, memorize things, mm -hmm. um, just learn these stories that imply morals and principles. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Have to present yourself well, have to, you know, all of that stuff. It did help me out. It even goes back down to what you were saying. You were disciplined. Well, even those type of things, you're like you're instilling discipline in yourself. Like yeah. you sit here, mm -hmm. you be quiet. It's time for the preacher to come on, yeah. or you know, you are required to do choir because, you know, you may have a gift in singing and you yeah. don't even know. You didn't even tap that area before because yeah. we. Well, now the generation now is kind of like I don't want to go to church. All right, well go ahead, lay down. Now you shut the door and you let the kids lay in. You know, but like. Their gift could be laying right in the bed and it hasn't been tapped into because you're not instilling these things in them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So discipline, that goes back to discipline. Like it, it goes all the way up from, you know, a child just instilling those things in. So since you're not in ministry anymore, you still attend? Oh yeah, I definitely still attend. Like I said, my, my pastor, if he texts me right now to do something like, I'm kind of a, a, a project, a yeah. I'm a project kind of person now, so like, and I keep, I keep Only our, for big projects. They mm, call you. I keep our um our New Fork Baptist um, website, um, not website, but their Facebook page updated and stuff like that now. So um, I enjoy it, and like I did the Hallelujah Night, which is Halloween night. I did that this year, um, and I did a. a Super Bowl in February. I think it's February, right? Super Bowl. So you coordinate everything. So I, co I coordinated everything from pretty much start to finish. So like, you know, yeah. decorate the church and, you know, football stuff, people wear their jerseys. Like, have fun, like, while you're learning about God. Like, yeah. it's nothing wrong with being fun. You don't have to be... And then my pastor, he wants you to, like, come as you are. Like, yeah. you don't have to be in a suit or whatever. Just, you know get connected with him is the main goal yeah what is, your, what is your personal what is your personal spiritual journey look like since you have transitioned from that you know what i mean so i have to be a little bit i'm going back to this word discipline <laughs> um because and then in COVID too i would say like it, it took you away from the building yes yeah so like you gotta know something now like you have to you have to connect yourself with it. Exactly. Like you before, it's like okay, it's a building. I go in, I sit in, or whatever. But now you can lay in bed. Yeah. You know, and turn it on YouTube yeah. or whatever you want to watch on Xfinity. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I haven't. I I connect every Sunday to something to some service, um, and then if it's not Sunday, you can connect to it because that's the beneficial part about it too. Now. Everything is online, so nobody has any excuse like, oh, I couldn't make it to church. Church is right yeah. online. <laughs> church is right online. <laughs> I tell people that oh, so, there's no excuses for anything anymore. No. You know what I'm saying? If that's what it's you want to do. 
So, um, like, when you're not in the physical locations of the church, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's some things that you do to keep yourself spiritually grounded? Like, if you're having a tough time or a tough mm -hmm. day or something. I'm a reader. Um, mm -hmm. I'm only a reader for spiritual books. Like, I'm not a read for fun type of person. Yeah, yeah. just I'm regular just, entertainment. Yeah. I'm just not a big reader. I never have, even during school, like, I wasn't, but I do like reading spiritual books. So, um, people you can get books with people you connect with. Like, I connect with T.D. Jakes. Like, he's raw, he's real. Like, you know, um, I have a couple of Joel Alstein books. Um, he's, the, he's the softer one, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but he um, makes you feel good. <laughs> he makes you feel good. But, like, Joel, he keeps it real too, but he just says TD, I can understand him. <laughs> Joel creeps me out. Does he? <laughs> you creep me out, Joel. <laughs> yeah. But TD, yeah, yeah. TD gangster. Mm -hmm. He a gangster. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if he a real pass. He's yeah. a gangster with it. Like, it's, it's like they just, he just went and like drenched himself in the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? But his presentation is so it's raw. It's amazing. And then his motivational <laughs> speeches he be giving. He they just make you want to get it right then and there. It don't mm -hmm. matter. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Ooh, boy. You know Spitting that fire up there. Damn, I done started like, cleaning my house. I, was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was working on these ideas. He told me to do it. Now it's time to do it. Joyce Myers. She's another good read, too. Yeah, these are staples right yeah. here, man. Yeah. You're yeah. having a staple. Yeah. You got the big, big ones. Yeah, you gotta yeah. go for the big headers. Might as well. So but when you that... when you follow them, um, do you also do research on them as well, or do you just like follow their word? Um, I follow what I follow people who I connect with. Um, so if I if I listen to you a couple times and I don't connect with you or your word or your style. I move yeah. on to someone I connect with, um, mm -hmm. and and because we're Bob readers, like you can yeah. just kind of feel it, you know yeah. what works for you. So like, um, that's what I was three, questioning. Just yeah. in case the people might be able to catch something for them, so they can know how to distinguish. Because a lot of people used to say starting off when YouTube was really rocking was like, oh, you just listening to these retarded people on YouTube. <laughs> In the basement, living at home, they want to do something. But nah, this is way bigger and broader than that now. And some some pastors, you know, like, oh, this pastor, you know, cheated on his wife, or this and this and that, you know. It, it's not a perfect walk for anyone. Um, now, I don't uh, maybe agree with what that person did, but they got to deal with that consequences when they, you know. They got to feel that conviction and that hurt when they lay down. They have yeah. to deal with that. So... I think every, you know, people try to throw, like, um, Pastor Gray, I think recently, you know, had some things going on in his marriage or whatever, but it's kind of like, mm. that's his own personal journey. Like, I'm not going to completely put that pastor to the side. So, I don't know. I just go with vibes, with, with who, vibe, who I vibe with. Yeah. yeah. The older I get, depending on the, the degree of the offense. When people make mistakes, yeah. it humanizes them more so than anything. Mm -hmm. It makes yeah. it so like they're not just a figure. Yes. You know what I mean? More relatable. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you have faults too. So don't sit there and judge me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah, you gotta be. That's yeah. why I don't try to be or I never have been a judgy person. I mean, we read people to a certain extent when we meet people. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, but that's like on a different scale. That's not yeah, that. self-preservation. Yeah, that's not. I'm mean? not digging in depth right then and there. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty dope, though. You know what I'm saying? You done kept a nice, strong base, strong connection. You keep your kids grounded with mm -hmm. the same spiritual connection. Mm-hmm. I do. I'm gonna. I'm guilty on the part where I've let her lay in bed a couple times, but she's 18 now, so she's <laughs> been in church. She went to. A, she yeah. started off at a um, Christian school, so like she was reciting scriptures and stuff at five. So like she's connected, and that's the main thing. Like, get connect, get yeah. them, get the kids connected, um, mm -hmm. and figure out a way for them to stay connected yeah. some kind of way. Like, I when my daughter leave for college next year, like I don't know. Like when when you're having the hard time doing the class and like 
you're crying and you're depressed or a boyfriend or a breakup yeah. like what's going to bring you peace like i need to like instill those things in her like mm -hmm. you know get connected with god just pray about it you know and so those those type of things is what i enjoy most about being in ministry is just getting the kids connected that's dope yeah i know we all didn't experience the church life you know what i'm saying i know for me it kept me it put me in that place to where even though I didn't follow that same path afterwards when I had the choice, because when I got older, I still tried to go back and forth to church when I could, like mm -hmm. when I had the choice, you know what I'm saying, when I wasn't forced, but, you know, it just wasn't my path, but taking that, you know, my mom's and my grandma, my whole family, just being raised in the church, it was my blueprint, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. for me to kind of get to where I'm at and know who I am now, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, spiritually, so... But it's still in you. You're still connected. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. You're still connected. And, you know, some people like, you know, the Bible this, the Bible that. Like, you know, it's a lot. the Bible is a book of stories. Like, right now, we probably can write, rewrite a book of another Bible now of what we're going through during yes. these times. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you just find find things in the in the Bible, like, whether it's, like, peace or um you know the book of job job went through all these problems like you it doesn't exempt us from going through problems yeah. in life and stuff like that but you can overcome it like just you know keep faith and stuff so just use the bible to kind of like up, uplift you and just get to the next level um because problems can drown you out here yes <laughs> Internally, yeah, yeah. That's the crazy part. Yeah. Like, How am I drowning from the inside? Yeah, yeah. that's kind of like that Kendrick Lamar song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it depends. It can drown you. It, it's, it's yeah, figuratively, it could drown you in your thoughts. It could drown your emotions. It could drown you when you exhausting your time. You yeah. indulging in drugs. You it it don't matter. It can be even anything. just sitting in mm -hmm. that loop of just rethinking those same little couple words that you're thinking of is not allowing you to expand. You yeah. know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like. So I be trying to tell myself, all right, I'm in this space. I give myself, depend on, you know what I'm saying, the level it is, you know what I'm saying? I give myself a time limit of how long I'm gonna be in that space. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I always acknowledge it. I'm not one of the people that, you know, um, here it is, okay, let me not hurry. Let me just get away from it as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, all right, you frustrated, or you got some anxiety, or you stressed, or you mad, you know what I'm saying? All right, boom, what about this? Sit right here, get your little pity party out the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just acknowledging it, right? Not, yeah, yeah. Now, now you need to get your ass yeah. up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've, I've been pitying myself so. long enough. So, yeah. it's been 20 minutes. Yeah. But then that forces myself <laughs> to stop thinking the same thoughts, and that's where it starts from. You know what I'm saying? Is where you just got that loop of just keep thinking of whatever yeah. situation just happened. You know what I'm saying? And now your whole day done went by and you ain't done nothing. <laughs> Listen, I have many days like that. <laughs> Especially during this pandemic, I've had yeah. many days like that. You just sit, you just pretty much in the house with your own thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, deep reflection. That's yeah. something I've had a lot of time to do over the years. So when I see the world going through deep reflection and I see the different people reacting to their internal struggles. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. amazing because I went through that battle before. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because when you, when you get to that space, it's almost like you can have that outer body experience. You know what I'm saying? So you can go outside and you can see people who are doing fine or who are doing good or who are having a hard time, but you can kind of see the hard times look like they're literally having a fight with themselves on the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all in the eyes. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. literally. But it looks mm -hmm. like they're taking it out on somebody else, but it's a fight mm -hmm. within themselves. So. And, like, have, get a friend to be a sounding board. I feel like, you know, sometimes we do throw spirituality, spirituality, like yeah. pray about it, whatever. But yeah. sometimes it's just as healthy to, to sit down and talk to your friend, like somebody that you can confide in. Not somebody that yeah. feel like they got to spread your business or whatatever. Yeah. But true like a Don't true friend yeah mm -hmm. but somebody you can really share with and they'll keep it real with you you know and get that sometimes just a friend is all you need like yeah. for real yeah to get you through yeah and 
Friends is the people you can do everything with. You know, that's even a tough title because we all raised thinking a friend is just somebody we spend the most time around. Yep. You know what I'm saying? As you get older and you run the situations, you realize mm-hmm. that's not the case. Or a therapist. Like, there's nothing wrong with a therapist. Yeah. I've been to counseling a couple times. And it's just somebody, it's really just a sounding board person. Yeah, that's, that's what I like to, the perspective I like yeah. to give people because, you know, people people process a little bit differently um but yeah i think it's like an unbiased ear about your thoughts off of yeah so you can process it yourself mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah it's not like a cousin or a friend like i told you this i mm-hmm. told you that you know but you also go in there with that perspective you know what i'm saying to some people that's kind of forced to have to go in there so mm-hmm. that's a good way of looking at it if you have to go into therapy and you don't know you know what i'm saying this is two perspectives that's basically the same and telling you what kind of way you should go in so that way you know what I'm saying like you have to be it's like a release because energy don't decimate transfer mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. and you have to be ready yourself because yeah. I tried it when I was younger when I was like 14 and I tried it again when I was about 25 and it didn't work when I was 14 at all mm-hmm. I felt like they was trying to coerce me. Like I said, I felt like it was their job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even at 25, yeah. I went in there and I felt like that. I had a white therapist, but just the more I said, she was just like, oh, I, I never seen it. Like she just, I was just, she just let me bounce everything off of her. Yeah, and yeah. then after a while, I'm just like, oh, these are my thoughts. Mm-hmm. These yeah. ain't even necessarily her thoughts. I just perceive her this way. And then, you know, you just start <laughs> talking more. You want to start to give more mm-hmm. of what you got so you can process mm-hmm. yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Having a right counselor. Or therapist makes a world of difference. Everybody mm-hmm. can't relate to you, yeah. Um, and you can't connect with everybody. Um, I've had that experience. So right now, I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, reaching out, trying to find a black therapist, mm-hmm. um, which I have not yet, but which it's it's very limited out here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Limit limited. Mm-hmm. So, it's like. Um, for me, I had that little situation where I was in a place to where I had time to self-reflect. Mm-hmm. So, for me, I didn't do the therapy thing. I did it like couples thing, trying it here and there, but not like a full-on session with me. Mm-hmm. But I had enough self-awareness time to where when I came home, I was self-disciplined. And I got to that space where I was researching and learning more that I could sit there and intake this information from these people from the computer as if I'm in the actual location, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because now I wanted to learn that discipline in myself yeah. as well, you know what I'm saying? So to me, those felt like going to therapy, mm-hmm. you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Y'all went to the actual physical locations, but like you said, like even when we find the videos, we trying to find the right vibe to listen to. Like, yeah. Yeah, you, if you yeah. don't sound right, if your background or something just feels a little <laughs> off or something, like you got the wrong piece of yeah. clothing, I don't know what it could be, just something yeah. that's... Throwing it off. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah, like, literally. ah, it was yeah. only good for about two, three minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the information be yeah. priceless, man. Yeah. It could just be the tone of their voice, and you'd be like, ah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you remind me of my cousin. I'm right? trying to finish yeah. this out. I know I'm supposed to listen to this. That's funny because um, Joyce Myers is like probably one of my favorite books. Actually, I recommend that book. Really, it's called Battlefield of the Mind. Mm-hmm. I recommend that book to anybody. But I can't. Her voice. Her voice. Joyce. That's the that's the other staple. Is TV. <laughs> Um, Joe, TDJ, Creflo, mm-hmm. and her. Mm-hmm. That's what yeah. <laughs> You ever seen uh, Jane Elliott? She got the uh, blonde hair, she got the blonde eyed, brown eyed kid test. Yeah, I'll have to check her out. Yeah, she got a crazy experiment where she is teaching these kids that racism and ignorance is taught, but she got one of the ignorant voices, but the information oh, the is short, older lady. priceless. Yeah. 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 What well, she be doing them focus groups where she be having a Oh yeah, yeah. you know what I'm talking okay. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I love I love yeah. I love her message she when yeah, her voice she, is. Yeah, she do. She looks scary, like when I'm a little scary right there. She <laughs> like look really creepy. <laughs> the voice sounds weird, but the information and you could feel is genuine mm-hmm. so it's like mm-hmm. that look or mold just came from that generation time that she was brought up in you yeah know what i'm saying but the energy the message flows through that still so it's like it's crazy how it works you know what i'm yeah. saying mm-hmm. so um what you got coming up next you know what i'm saying got some new projects you want to start working on some new ideas you want to start putting out there yeah. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to share. Let's see. 
I'll share because I'm passionate about it. So I always want to go into real estate. So um, I'm going to probably start that journey um, soon. Um, I wanted to do it when I was 18, but I had to reroute some things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But. Uh, I'm throwing those shots at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Right so, when I was that's 18. my baby. No, that's, yeah, yeah. that's my baby. Like she's a she's a complete blessing. Yeah. Like she is, she is. But it, it's the reroute. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking about real estate um, because I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate to see people grow, and you know, just you know, if it's a, it's just, if you think it's a dream, like. Sometimes it's a dream come true. Like I like yeah. to see people happy. That's why, like, in my recruiting world now, I recruit at University of Virginia. Like, just them seeing them get their next job, like their next, they get into the next level. Like that's exciting for me. So just seeing mm -hmm. people get to the next step in their life, yeah, that yeah. part is so exciting. So I've always seen myself doing real estate. So we'll see where it goes. Um, I may get into it and like, mm, this not for me, but right now like just the fact that i've been you know asked to share two times yeah. you know with this year like you it's know. a sign and maybe it's a sign it's a sign <laughs> one more sign and you already know it's definitely <laughs> so we can go all right, all right. so we're 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 at right at three right at three that was easy this time <laughs> sheesh uh anything else you got lined up coming up the moment I'm getting my daughter um, prepared for college so she's, a, she's a senior so she's um we've been applying to colleges so getting she her prepared she's doing sports she's getting the baby out the house yeah, man know. come on man I know it's been a long time coming it has been she ready it has been <laughs> so she played basketball from 6th grade all up to her 11th grade year and she decided not to do it this year mm. um she just wanted to focus um in other areas. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, so, but yeah, that's that's what 2021 looking like anyway. Getting her ready. Um, trying to figure little out little. my next step in my life. You already got it lined up. You just yeah. said it. You about to start helping people with the real estate. You know, even if you don't dive full in. Mm -hmm. Advisory. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Planting seeds. You already helping other people already with it. So. Yeah. And also, just like um. The senior year of high school and the first year of college is very fundamental in like the development of the person. Mm -hmm. So like having support yeah. mm -hmm. is very important for somebody that age, even if they don't realize that they need it. You yes, know what I mean? yeah. it's so important. Like today, right before I came here, I was helping my daughter do her resume because she's never done a resume yeah. and there's no teacher to teach this right now. So like you gotta yeah. sit down and I, like yeah, I'm in recruiting, but. I went. I never done a high school resume, so I googled it and I'm like, okay, this is what it is. So we just, you know, sat down and typed up some stuff. You just follow. Okay, here's where the name is. Here's what the address yeah. is, and you know, you just follow it. Then um, have a bunch of jobs to put down. Yeah, yeah. So it, but it's just yeah. doing it with her, you know, sometimes just helps a child. Just doing it with them. So. Exactly. Yeah. That's pretty dope. Yeah. That's pretty dope. We definitely appreciate you coming out. Yes, yeah. Showing some love and yeah. support. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. I enjoyed it. And I do want to share one thing, just in case someone watches this and they have no idea what really to contact. Because when I was in a position, I want to remember, when I was 28, I remember the guy from high school, Jay Hurdle. And I reached out to him. So, Jay Hurdle is a, is a realtor that you can reach out to. Roxanne Carter Johnston, April um, Dent Ward, Crystal Townsend, um, just to name a few. But reach out and just have a conversation with them um, about what you need to line up. They'll kind of guide you. They may give you three little things to do. Look at your credit, what area you want to live in, or you know what your finances look like. That could just be a, a step. So I just wanted to just throw those names out, just just in case. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you want to send that over to me? I can just drop the links down. Okay. Um, make sure y'all hit that um, fucking down arrow, down arrow, down arrow. Description, description. The links is always down in the description for everything, 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 everything. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It's been another dope episode of the Track yes, Wolf Godcast podcast. Podcast. You know? <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, we appreciate all the love and support, you know what I'm saying? Y'all make sure y'all check out Vinegar Hill as always, you know what I'm saying? We all had the links down below, you mm. know what I'm mm. saying? Got Chino Blizzy in the Ooh, building. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm your boy Track Beats, we signing out. Yes, sir.